In this video, we'll be talking about the orcs and goblins in Warhammer. They are one of the races that have been confirmed for Total War Warhammer. You can't have Warhammer without greenskins. They are the comedic relief of the Warhammer world. They are also one of the most dangerous races in the Warhammer world. Constant threats to the civilized peoples, especially the humans and the dwarves. They've also stopped one or two chaos incursions by headbutting. So, for the orcs, we have your standard greenskin orcs. The orc boys on the bottom left can be equipped with spears, bows, or hand weapons. And they are fairly sturdy troops, harder to kill than your average human. But they are susceptible to what most greenskins are, which is animosity. Animosity means that... If, you, if you're lucky with your dice rolls, at the beginning of a battle or at the beginning of a round, your unit can just stand around doing nothing, squabbling amongst themselves, or they can start infighting, which, if they take enough casualties, means that the entire unit is just going to run off the battlefield. Very unfortunate, and I've seen that happen quite a few times to the grief of the commander of the orcs. Then we have the savage orcs, and they can use two-hand weapons, they can use spears they can they have magical war paint which sometimes protects them they can also use arrows less technologically advanced than other orcs and that's saying something then we have uh, the big ones the big ones are sort of an upgrade they are orcs that have grown to a bigger stature physically they have gotten better gear and they are more capable than your standard orcs then we have the black orcs, even more dangerous than the big ones. These are dark-skinned orcs wearing heavy armor, able to bring a full complement of gear to the battlefield, both two-handed weapons, uh, uh, two hand weapons and um, hand weapon and shield. Very durable, not prone to animosity like other greenskins. The most dangerous orcs and the most dangerous legendary orcs to have come out of the greenskin race come from the black orcs. Then we have the smaller cousins, the goblins, looked down upon by the orcs, both figuratively and literally. They live just about everywhere. They live. Uh, the, you have the night goblins of the mountains, you have the forest goblins, and then you have your standard goblins of the badlands. They can be equipped with arrows, hand weapons, or spears. They can also have some pretty special extra equipment in their in their uh, unit, namely nets that inca incapacitates opponents. Very cheap. The goblin fanatics are unique to the night goblins. Uh, they drink a potion consisting of mushroom brew before the battle, and it makes them go crazy, swinging a huge ball and chain around the battlefield in a somewhat random direction. So you can, you can see these guys spinning out of your unit, hopefully hitting some some um, knights charging in, only to see them start spinning back into the unit, killing enough men that the unit flees off the battlefield. So once more, um, pretty unstable element in the army, but one that is great when it works. Below even the goblins are the weak snotlings, and they are hardly useful for anything other than carrying stuff around for the bigger green, their bigger greenskin cousins, and in terms of killing power, they just don't have it. Uh, the small in stature, mean little creatures. What they ha do have is the Snotling Pump Wagon to the lower left. A dangerous contraption that, when it works, can cause significant casualties to just about anything on the battlefield. But that is if it works. And we have the mounts used by the orcs and goblins. And... Top left, we have the boars, preferred mounts of orcs. You have boar boys and you have savage orc boar boys riding on these mounts. Bottom left, we have a wyvern, a draconid that is weaker than a dragon, but dangerous nonetheless. Can carry an orc warlord around on the battlefield. And some legendary orc warlords have ridden named wyverns. To the bottom right, we have a squig, uh, hops about the battlefield, chewing on anything it can find. Another random element in the Orc and Goblin army, as if they didn't have enough of those, but it can be very dangerous if it manages to la land in the right place. Wolves, top right, Goblin Wolf Riders, very fast, <coughs> not particularly strong in combat, can be equipped with spears or hand weapons, uh, also they can function as, ho as um, 
wolf archers running about the battlefield and peppering the enemy with arrows. So the the, the orc mounts and the orc cavalry, not the he he most heavily armored, not the fastest, not the best charged, but they can be effective. Then we have the war machines, and this is where it really becomes apparent that the orcs aren't very technologically advanced. They've managed to smash together a few pieces of wood and metal, create a rock lobba, your standard, your standard um, catapult. They have managed to strap some harnesses onto boars and wolves, creating chariots. The wolf chariot just is very fast but not very durable, and the orc boar chariot is a fairly decent uh, chariot. Not the best, but it can cause some casualties on the charge. Then we have the Goblin Doom Diver, which is a contraption used for sending a suicidal goblin with a helmet towards the enemy, and the goblin can then use its wings to hopefully try to, to hit the target a bit better. And you can see some snotlings are assisting with all of these war machines. So the Doom Diver catapult has been feared by mages, uh, dragons, other beasts, and rightly so, because getting a goblin with a sh uh, sharp conical helmet in your head is not going to be a good time. Then we have the beasts, and the orcs and goblins can bring several beasts to the battlefield, one of them being a giant. And the giant is once again an unreliable factor, because you have very little control over how the giant decides to engage his enemies. He might swing with his club, he might just jump up and down, he might try to stomp something, he might try to eat something, he might try to stuff something in a bag. Now, if that is a high-value target, mage, lord or something, that's great. But if the giant just decides to jump up and down a bit and scare the enemy to little effect, then that giant isn't going to do much. Very dangerous, hard to bring down, but another unstable element in the orc army. Then we have the stone troll. Uh, there are also river trolls. They have regeneration, which means they can be hard to put down because any damage done to them has a chance to be simply ignored. The wounds healed. Uh, trolls are also very stupid, so they are prone to stupi stupidity. They have to take a leadership test to see if they just stand around doing nothing because they're so stupid, and that can happen and can be very unfortunate. But tough beasts, hard to, hard to bring down. They can also use a vomit attack to eat through the armor of heavily armored opponents. And then we have the squigs, and these can both be herded, pushed towards the enemy, sat upon so they can jump about. And we also have some giant squids that have a few special attacks, but common for all squids is that they are bad-tempered, unstable, likely to eat their handlers, and can cause mayhem if they manage to connect with the enemy, but that is a huge if. And one of the most, uh, one of the most striking characteristics of the orc army is that it can be terrifying, but only if everything works the way it's supposed to. There's always this that chance with the Orc and Goblin army that your units simply won't do what you want them to do. And the random factor means that some of the time, at important times, you just won't see your units perform on the battlefield. Which can make for some pretty hilarious scenarios, but can be very frustrating for the Orc and Goblin commanders. So, the Greenskins can be very fun but also very frustrating. They bring huge numbers to the battlefield, which I hope to, to see uh, hope to see that reflected in larger unit sizes. But how the Creative Assembly is going to, to put the random factor of the Orcs and Goblins into the total war engine, I am very curious to see. Now, it would be awesome if your units actually could start fighting amongst themselves. And... Um, you saw squigs eating their handlers and stuff like that. That would be really, really, really cool. So with the orcs and goblins, you get uh, decent magic. I'll talk a bit more about that later. You get very good close combat capabilities. You get huge numbers, but those numbers won't always go where you want them to. Strength and honor and war.